Hey everyone and welcome to my Retro Arc installation guide for the PS Vita. I really appreciate you being here and watching my content and if you enjoy what I do please consider subscribing to the channel. Before we dive into the installation process let me quickly explain what RetroArch is for those of you who may be unfamiliar. RetroArch is an incredibly powerful front end for emulators, game engines and media players. It allows you to run classic games on a wide range of devices through its impressive graphical interface. One of RetroArch's best features is its unified settings, meaning you only need to configure everything once. It's packed with advanced features that set it apart from other emulation apps, making it by far the best choice for playing your classic games. It even has an achievement system created by the community. If you enjoy earning trophies on PlayStation Network like I do, you'll love this feature. My name is Robles Jr. and I'll be your guide today. I primarily cover PS Vita and PSP homebrew content, but I also like to branch out with other topics like unboxing tech and vintage phones. Consider subscribing so you don't miss any new content. Let's get started with installing RetroArch. First, make sure your PS Vita is jailbroken. If you haven't jailbroken your device yet, check out my step-by-step -step guide on how to do that effortlessly. Also want to mention that while you can download RetroArch from the Vita DB homebrew store, it will take a lot longer due to the Vita's limited download speeds. The method I'll show you is faster and you'll need either a PC or a phone to transfer the files via FTP. Step one, we're going to download some files. Head over to the RetroArch website, link in the pinned comment, and download two files, the RetroArch VPK and the data files under the PS Vita option. Once downloaded, extract the zip file containing the data files. Step two, we're going to transfer our files to our PS Vita. So connect your PS Vita to your PC via Vita Shell or connect via FTP client on your smartphone. Transfer both files to the root directory of your PS Vita. After disconnecting from USB, stay in Vita Shell. Step three, we're going to install the RetroArch VPK file and wait for the installation to finish. Once done, launch the app to ensure it's working. If it doesn't launch, try installing the VPK again. When it works, go back to Vita Shell. And finally, step four, we're going to move some data files. Navigate to the RetroArch data folder and find the subfolder containing seven folders like filters, overlays, assets, etc. Press triangle, then select all and press triangle again to choose move. This will copy all of those folders. Go back to the root directory and find the data folder. Inside, locate the RetroArch folder, open it, press triangle and choose paste. This will move the data files into the correct location. This step may take a while, but once it's done, launch RetroArch. You should see a font change, which indicates the data files were successfully transferred. You should also see the version number 1.20 at the bottom of the screen, which is the latest version of RetroArch. Let's now move on to setting up your ROMs. RetroArch supports a wide variety of consoles, but keep in mind that the PS Vita has hardware limitations. For organization, I created a ROMs folder in the root directory of my PS Vita, then subfolders for like Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, etc. You can organize your ROMs however you prefer. Make sure you have all of your ROMs copied over to your SD card on your PS Vita. And we're going to move on to launching RetroArch. And before we start adding ROMs to the main menu for RetroArch, let's adjust the interface for better navigation. Here's how I set up mine. Go to the settings option and under user interface, under menu, change it to XMB for a more familiar PlayStation style interface. Go back to the main menu and select restart and the system will restart with the new interface. To tweak it further, we're going to go into settings, under user interface, 
and appearance. Here you can adjust things like the scale factor. I use 1.00x for perfect fit. Then I enable shadows for better readability and change the icon theme and I personally like the flat UX. You can adjust the background color to your liking as well and it just makes it pop a little bit more. Once the interface looks the way that you want, let's import your games. Go under the main menu and select scan directory. Find your ROMs folder and select it. The scanning process may take a while depending on how many games you have. I recommend scanning one console at a time, especially if you want to avoid draining your Vita's battery. Now when you select a folder, it won't show anything, but once you start scanning, it will start to show a percentage at the bottom of your screen. And this is pretty typical with this option. I'm not sure why it doesn't really show the folders that's there and all the games that can be scanned but this is a typical little bug that I see with RetroArch. When it's finished, you'll see your games sorted by the system they're from, and you're now ready to play. We're gonna move on to configuring hotkeys for easy access. Before playing, let's set up hotkeys for convenience. Go to Settings, and under Input, select Hotkeys. Depending on whether you're using a wireless controller or the Vita itself, adjust the menu toggle to something simple. I use the start and select combo, which makes it easy to access the quick menu during gameplay. Now let's select a game and start playing. Choose a game from your library and RetroArch will prompt you to select a core for that game. I generally use the latest core, but some games may run better with older versions, so you can always change cores if needed. Once you have your game running, you should be able to access the quick menu by pressing your hotkeys of start and select combo, and you'll have the option to close out the game, restart the game, save your state, load your state, and all sorts of different options there. Let's now move on to the Retro Achievement Setup. If you're into achievements, RetroArch has a fantastic feature called Retro Achievements. You'll need to create an account on the Retro Achievements website and log in on your PS Vita. Once you have your account created on the website, go into RetroArch and under Settings, select Achievements. Select Username and input your username you just created on the website and press Start to save. You'll do the same thing for the password option. Once that's all set up, make sure you have your Wi-Fi enabled and go ahead and start any game you'd like. If achievements are available, you'll see a notification pop up at the top letting you know how many you have unlocked so far. You can also view all available achievements through the quick menu during gameplay and it will show you exactly how to unlock those achievements. And what's great about this is that you can track your achievements on the website and it will show you what's your latest game that you played. And that is it for the basic setup of RetroArch on your PS Vita. You should now be able to run most of your classic games and it's an essential app for any retro gaming enthusiast. Let me know in the comment section what you think of this guide and RetroArch as an emulation tool. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more content. In future videos, I'll cover troubleshooting tips, theme customization, and additional settings to help you get the best performance out of RetroArch. So make sure you stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching, take care, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.